Fantasy Books of the Year. Kim, Dan Jacobson's book was set two and a half thousand years into the future. Does that make it science fiction? Uh, yes, of course it does. Uh, however, I doubt if, your pub if his publisher would agree with that. Uh, the same probably goes for the Patricia Highsmith we talked about earlier, who's obviously writing horror stories. Um, these genres are marketing categories, I think, rather than hard and fast literary rules. Currently, it seems to me that most of mainstream literature is gradually either being absorbed or absorbing itself into the science fiction, fantasy and horror field. Well, we've got A Spaceship Built of Stone by Lisa Tuttle. Science fiction written by a woman, is that usual? It used not to be. Recently, it's become rather more accepted. The women's press have been putting out a line of overtly feminist science fiction, which I know sounds terribly off-putting. However, Lisa Tuttle is uh, an individual voice by herself, a rather strangely mixed uh, of humanism and deep ghost story type of misery and pessimism. Mm -hmm. Now this huge tome, oh, yes, Weave World by Cla <laughs> Clive Barker, all about a carpet. Yeah, but only in the sense that the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe is all about a cupboard. Uh, it's about a world that exists within a carpet. Uh, is, I admit, a rather strange concept uh, for an epic novel um, and one hopes that there won't be a rash of carpet novels flooding the market now um, but it's basically an epic large-scale fantasy a clash between good and evil and of the strange moral ambiguities that exist between um, the two quite a lot of horror fantasy writers uh, willing to write about demonic forces but Clive Barker is one of the few people in the genre who's willing to tackle angels as a subject Ah. <laughs> Now, the last one I've actually read and I thought it was marvellous, Watchmen by mm. Alan Moore and David Gibbons, although I was put off because it's all comic strips. Mm -hmm. But it's well, quite something, it is isn't? actually a real novel. Uh, it's certainly, if you're talking word number, it's as long as the average book. That's kind of, I suppose, your postmodern superhero comic. It comes back to the ideas of Batman and Superman kind of like 20 or 30 years later and asks you, how would you really feel if people were dressing up in silly costumes and running around fighting crime for you? And how would this affect the world? And his conclusions, in fact, are rather depressing about this kind of masked vigilantism that would then overtake society. But it's so wonderfully done, isn't mm. it? Oh, yes, lots of great characters and strange details. I particularly like uh, the character who goes around with a trench coat and a slouch hat and a Rorschach blot on his face, <laughs> who is sort of Batman, but done as a total psychopath who everybody hates and no one can get on with. And he's just so obsessed with fighting crime that he, in fact, becomes the greatest danger to the human race possible, um, almost in the end, um, causing World War III with his strange attitudes. Well, thank you.